roll call. Uh, Alderperson Perella. Here. Alderperson Salazar. Here. Okay. Uh, Alderperson Savaglio is um, excused. And Alderperson Walt, Walt here. Okay. Uh, we'll bear with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the, the flag of the United States, States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, since we have a guest here, I think we'll do the introduction of staff. Uh, I'll start with myself. I'm Dean Decker, uh, Alder person from District 6 and the chair of the Public Works Committee. Grazie Piovella, Alder person for District 7 and vice chair. Andre Walton, Alder person of uh, District 10 and no chair. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Al Edwards. I live on Wiedemeyer Street in Sheboygan. I'm just a resident. Okay. In. okay. My role is Department of Public Works. Thomas Cameron, Assistant City Attorney. Uh, Ryan Sazman, Department of Public Works. David Beeble, Public Works. Yeah. Amanda Salazar, Alder District 3. Uh, Jason Blasiola, Public Works. Joe Curlin. Joe Curlin, Public Works. Oh, you're done. You're done. Oh, you're done. Okay, you're done. Never mind. <laughs> okay, we'll start it with 2.1 approval of minutes from December 28th. Move to approve. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion on those minutes? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And chair vote aye. Uh, those are approved. Okay, 3.1, winter parking dis discussion, discussion only. I guess, real quickly, I, I'd like to, we, we received an email, uh, and Grazia sent it to us, and I just would like to read for, okay. the, for those that have not seen this, or, okay. but I can at least read it, and that will at least start the discussion. Okay. Um, basically, it, it states, I just got my winter clothes on and schlepped downstairs outside to sweep the snow off my car so I can drive it 50 feet to the other side of the street. Why? Question mark. Both parking lanes on my street are unplowed. The idea of moving our cars every day is to accommodate, accommodate plows at night. They've been missing in action now for several days, but we who work at home are retired are in bed sick or just don't have a reason to drive anywhere today, must go outside and move our cars from one side to the other for the plows. For when they don't come, for when there is no snow, for God only knows why. I have given up. I just want you to know how enormously annoying it is to do this 50 feet of driving for the plows when there's no snow to plow. Every damn day, I'm beyond fed up. It's not fair, it's not right, I thought you would understand that. Uh, signed by Mr. Mike Smith. So, wanted to make sure that that was part of the record as, as um, he forwarded this sign. So, with that, I think what we decided to do was at least have a discussion on winter parking rules and at least to give, uh, I, I guess, elders and the, the folks in attendance and at the meeting here uh, an understanding and the rationale of why it's in place and what it is and kind of how it, how it was evolved to this stage. So I, Jason's done quite a bit of research on this topic. Uh, winter parking rules has been in place uh, for a long time. And I guess with that, I just would turn it over to Jason, our street superintendent. Well, 2017, we updated the snow emergency rules. And as part of that, I looked at the winter parking rules for the top 20 cities by population in the state, and then a few of the um, surrounding communities that are not as big. The vast majority of these communities have alternate street parking year round. Um, we only have alternate street parking through December through April from new, uh, excuse me, midnight to 6 a.m. That is one of the changes we made um, when we looked at the snow ordinance, it was from 2 a.m. till midnight, and we moved it to midnight because typically we have a shift change around 11:30. So 
So those guys would go out and plow, and then they'd have to go back and start over again at two o'clock because technically cars were supposed to move. Um, but we had three listening sessions. We made presentations, common council, um, and then negotiated or the committee here at that time came up with different ideas and rules. But um, the vast majority of municipalities have no parking on any street during a snow emergency. That wasn't something this committee or the residents wanted. So we do have the alternate side parking between midnight and 6 a.m. The reason for that is so that we can get the car, the snow to the curb. And if we don't do that, the streets are gonna creep and you're gonna park not up over that unplowed area. You're gonna park where the street is plowed and those cars are gonna get narrow or the lanes are going to get narrower and narrower and it's the point where there's a large portion of the city that is quite old where you're not going to be able to get a plow an ambulance or a fire truck so i did go around today and but that's not the picture i want to start with this is lita meyer with two inches of snow and it's already plowed under the one side. If there's no alternate street parking, I might plow and I'm not gonna be able to plow one side of the street. It's just gonna be plowed where that plow is. And eventually that snow is gonna build up and those cars are gonna start moving towards the center lane. And I'm not gonna get a plow down if this is a normal winter. This is an abnormal winter, the lack of snow. So I can see why people are frustrated with all the street parking because it hasn't snowed. And I would say in 10 or 15 years, if this is the new climate, then this committee needs to maybe adjust this, but I'm not convinced that this is gonna be the normal um, this year. But that is the purpose of the alternate site parking. So today I went around and this is downtown. There's already people not following the rule. Well, this is a different issue. But you can see these cars that have been parked already. So imagine all these cars throughout the city. Are, these these were taken today? Yeah, these are and, all from today. So, and again, the other thing I think you have to notice is that car has not been moved. It's got snow still on it from over 24 hours ago. And there's already an ordinance. And there's an ordinance in place that cars have to be every moved 24 every 24 hours. hours. And they, 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 this, you can find examples of cars just parked all over the city today that haven't been moved and they're just parked there. So we're going around and you can see we haven't been able to get one side completely already cleared with alternate side parking. Without it, it would, I don't think we'd be able to provide a safe service without it, which is, is my opinion. It, it, when you, when you, it, I think you have, as Jason showed on his on his spreadsheet, Sheboygan has in by far some of the most liberal on-street parking regulations compared to our peer communities. Manitowa, Menominee Falls, other all the other top 20 communities in the state of Wisconsin are much more restrictive in terms of their on-street parking. And Sheboygan is very similar in terms of its age its density, its compactness, and narrowness of streets as well. So this isn't um, that Sheboygan's unique. We can't we can't uh, uh, enforce winter parking. It's it's a matter of being able to be able to respond to the to the needs of the of the community and keeping the streets safe and being able to have equipment access. And then the other. There's a little bit of confusion because the city of Milwaukee does have an exception to alternate street parking. It's not the entire city. It's by UWM and the near south side. And it's only when a snow emergency is called and that those streets go into alternate side parking. But if we look at something like that, I'd have to call a snow emergency a lot more often. It's relying on people to remember. And then it's also the forecasts have been all over and they're wrong. 
a lot of the time. So, I mean, someone's going to bed and they think they're okay. And they, you know, and then we get four inches of snow by the time they get up in the morning. I mean, those cars aren't going to be moved by doing it, even though the, this winter has been kind of dry. I, I don't think that's a good practice going back and forth. The other thing is those areas, and this would be very unpopular, is they go in and they tow heavy. So they call a snow emergency and you're not off in those time periods, they got tow trucks lined up and they're, they're pulling those cars out of there. That, so it sounds like in practice it would be something, but I think our citizens would probably be a little more upset with us if we had to enforce a local Yeah, I just think yeah, I, I, I've looked at it a little over, over the years, been part of the different committees and things like this. And, you know, although it's not ideal, it's, it, it, it is ideal as far as it's the best that we I think that it's the best that we can do. You know, I, I think it is. I think it's, I know it's frustrating when you look outside. But that, one of the arguments that I hear about is people saying, well, I got to move my car. Well, your car should be, shouldn't be parked anyways for 20, 24 hours is the limit. That is the limit of having a car parked in the city of Chicago. You cannot, you, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't get enforced as much as maybe it should, but it it's it is that is also on the books. So, anyone else have a discussion? Have a sure. <clears throat> For example, my need to walk. So there is no restriction, right? For year round. For year round. Yeah. So no alternate overnight parking. Right. Do I understand? So the then, yep, and then in the winter, you can't park on designated streets. Yeah. During December, January, February, March. Right, and those would be the city bus routes right. or designated. I don't know which other designated streets right. would be. Right, like. you would have to look. But then, so how does that work there? I can see that it would work. There basically no parking on city street during snow emergency. So right. just during snow emergency, which I don't know. It is about five inches, or I don't know. Right, uh, about that. Yeah. Okay. When it gets over five inches, that's when we start to look so how, at how, they, how are they doing in Manitoba? What is the, I mean, how does, I, I, it seems that there is someone else too, right? I mean, there is uh, Fond du Lac, same thing. Alternate no, parking. They've got alternate. They've got alternate. So Fond du Lac, it says non-restricted. For year round. So. So for an example, if you look, Menominee Falls, they have year round alternate site parking. Winter parking rules that applies. Oh. Greenfield year-round alternate site parking. So you go to Fond du Lac, they don't have a year-round parking restrictions, right. but they do have winter restrictions. Oh yeah, yeah, I didn't Alternate see parking between November 15th to March 15th. Right. Sorry, that was confusing. Yeah. No, no, that's fine. Um, for example, West Alice. No, they they have the. So I'm just trying to see. I don't know, Eau Claire is not restricted. Where is the, where, it's it's that the side parking is required for 72 hours after it's no emergency at all. Mm -hmm. A little bit. Okay. Yeah, Eau Claire is probably the the one that's less stringent than us. So they're non-restricted, non-restricted, they have snow emergencies. And then during a snow emergency, parking is required for 72 hours, yeah, alternate yeah. side parking. So I'm guessing as they're calling every two inches of snow, they're calling us probably Green, a snow emergency. Green Bay seems to say, I know, no overnight parking year round. Yeah. Okay. Yes. No, actually I was looking at, yeah. So, you know, my point is the, the con not concerned in, of course we all understand constituents that are frustrated with this, right? right. We all know that. And so we try to, to find a solution. This seems to be the best solution. The point is that, we almost go with it looks like with the current rule we almost go with default in default to an ad, a disadvantage for constituents versus to us as a city because by default we say okay we do that because if there is a snow emergency or if the, the snow becomes too much anyway even if it is not a snow emergency at least we know that we can plow Instead, if, if if we wanted to have restriction on in case of snow emergencies, then we have to rely on the constituents to take action. 
there is something that it is not quite right in that in that rationale to me. The fact that we want to go on default for four months to be sure to work to to not have issues sometime, some of the times. I mean, there is something that is not quite. Believe me, I, I no. agree with all this that we don't have a solution, alternative solution. Right. So. Out of all that, it comes out that during a snow emergency, 84% of those 20%, 20 cities, 84 of them say no parking on any street at all mm. during a snow emergency. So your round parking restrictions out of that 20, 44% is alternate side parking. Mm. You're, you're round. And then almost 20% have a permit. So they charge their citizens, mm -hmm. which we do not. And then 31% say year round, there's no parking on any any street. Mm -hmm. And then there are the other fewer uh, 24 hours. So by a snow, oh, that's declared. And then winter parking. So the majority of them use the year round, which is some sort of alternate street parking or no parking. And then winter parking, 25% of the other ones don't. And then no parking for 5%. So what we're doing is kind of standard operation procedures. Mm -hmm. We can't get a lot of citizens to follow the, the rules now. Now, if it was to the discretion of the weather channel or me having to call a snow emergency for every two inches, then there'd be no parking on dead ends, boulevards, cul-de-sacs, or any of the main roads. So during a snow emergency, you can park anywhere you want on the side streets from 6.01 a.m. to 12 p.m., which is quite accommodating by- 12 a.m. To 12 a.m., excuse me. And then you can't park on any of the, the emergency routes, we call them the red routes, dead ends, cul-de-sacs, and, and boulevards. So then the alternate site parking during that snow emergency stays the same. So, I mean, it might not sound like we have accommodating, but when you look at how other cities are managing it, we're, we're very accommodating. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, even with the alternate side parking, people that have driveways hate us. Because we'll plow and we'll get it cleaned up. And I have to come back when those cars move to the other side and I got to clean all those up and I fill up driveways a second time. And then I'm going to go back around probably again tomorrow because cars that haven't been parked and then neighbors call and say, I don't have a garage. I have to get to my sidewalk and the cars just moved and I don't want to climb up all, all over the snow. So I'm going to go back again. Even by doing the alternate side parking, I'm spending more on gas. I'm beating the trucks up more and more equipment. So, I mean, that's a why a lot of these people, or excuse me, a lot of these municipalities go, been, park, go parking. So they do it once. Yeah. But we put a, a priority on parking over snow removal. That, that, that's the biggest thing. I think people have the, the ability, you know, the, the people in the city of Spring have the ability to park on the street. Whereas a lot of the communities, I mean, the easiest thing for us would be having no no parking on the streets. That would be the best. I mean, if you go through, we, we, we would have the cleanest streets around. Yeah. <laughs> but by the same token, there's a lot of people that have nowhere else to go. So where would they so park? This is a I, this is a prime example. We have a boat because it's cheaper to park on the street than store your boat. And then the homeowner parks here. My plow comes around the corner and they can't plow there and they go around and then actually I think it's not your area I think it's Mitch and then every year it's a, the mayor calls me because I didn't plow this and then finally I found out it was the resident's car that's parked and I'm like oh there's a boat they can't park in the driveway and then it's like I got to come back and make sure that I clear out her, her parking spot for her so we, we mean it's People are storing boats and cars that don't run and parking on the street. So we don't even 
maximize all of our off street parking, which would help. So, and then the other problem is in the older parts of town, these houses and driveways were built for one car. And there's a two family, you know, two, uh, two spouses or partners have cars and they have a kid or two kids. The next thing you know, this house has got four cars and who wants, and my cul-de-sac, I'm dealing with it now because dad leaves for work early and he's home early. Well, the kids have to get up and move the car for him to go to work and they're not getting up at five to do that. So they park on the cul-de-sac even though they have a long driveway. Now, when the plow comes through, our, our cul-de-sac never gets cleaned until the last thaw because they're always shuffling cars around. Even though I'm telling my neighbor, I'm like, first I say park on the inside. <laughs> so that way they didn't get down. But I'm like, it's just put your cars on the driveway when it's snowing. And we, we, and we don't even maximize that. I think one other thing is too, would be a planning issue is, but as landlords start entering houses, somehow provide off street parking yeah you know if there's an alley and it's just grass that require a slab of concrete yeah so that they, can, so they have a place to park right so i think as a planning <clears throat> and development initiative that could be something that could be looked into yeah but it seems like as of right now there's no perfect solution there's definitely going to be people who are upset with it which is understandable but I lived in Milwaukee and there were whole streets you couldn't park on. I, I remember having to park four blocks down right? because there's whole blocks that you can't go to. And this is kind of like a much more laid back solution. I mean, you can park on the street, you won't get towed for the most part uh, or ticketed. In Milwaukee, they're very harsh on tickets um, and towing. <laughs> but I got my car towed. Were you on the east side? No, well, I was near Marquette area, which is very strict about that. Uh, so, I mean, I understand the frustration. Uh, it's annoying, but I think it's probably the best solution rather than harsher restrictions where we're towing people cars or, or cutting off whole blocks. Uh, unless you're like an apartment area where you have parking, it's, it's kind of the best solution, what, what we have to deal with, in my opinion. Alrighty. Does anybody else have to add to it? I think this is, I mean, I, 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 this, was, this was discussion only. I, 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 I know the frustration, but I, at the same time, I, I don't, I don't see a different. I don't. Unless somebody can come up with a miracle solution, <laughs> <laughs> I, I just don't see it. I just don't see it. I, I guess the only solution is just kind of having conversations with constituents yes. so about they know why it's in place. Yeah, yeah why it is in place. So. It's not like we don't care or that we just think, you know, yeah. we need to punish you guys. It's yeah, it's not, it's not, a, it's not out, it's not out to get somebody. It really isn't. I, I, I don't think even the police aren't, aren't, aren't actively going out and trying to ticket people, especially when it is the weather is, you know, nice, you know, nicer. I'm not saying that that, that doesn't mean that somebody, if they're parked on the wrong side, is not going to get a ticket, but you know, it's, it's, Sir, did you, chair, since, since you're here, did you have any comments that you wanted to, I'll, I'll, I'll open it up to, if you want. No, no I appreciate it. Um, I think this information is helpful. I agree with that gentleman that as a resident, I've gotten two tickets already this year and they were the two days that I parked on the wrong side of the street. Okay. So of course I was frustrated because I don't like getting tickets. Uh -huh. Nobody does. <laughs> but I didn't have this information and that's why I came today because you get frustrated when you don't understand. And I agree with that gentleman. If there's any way for the city to educate people like myself, it would probably keep yeah. my blood pressure in check because <laughs> I truly didn't understand the rationale and I appreciate the opportunity to hear the rationale, it makes complete sense. I mean, I, I've been in Milwaukee and I guess I've seen, you know, that that is a bit of a debacle. The streets are very narrow. And, you know, I understand your your dilemma in trying to appease everybody for sure. So I, I get it. And, and that's why I'm here. And okay. 
if you could just get the police department to lay off me a little bit, that would be nice, but I assume that's a different committee. <laughs> yeah, I, I have one more question. The rule the rule now goes through the end of April. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So why that long? Um, two reasons. I've the last couple of years I've gotten more snow in April than Jan December and January. And the rule went away, and there, were, and especially in your area, um, down by the lake where it's real narrow, um, like Clara, right? uh, the truck got there and just drove by because there was no way they were getting down without taking a bunch of mirrors. That makes Thomas upset. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got more complaints about the, the snow in April because we didn't do a very good job because. There were streets that took a couple of days before we could get there or there weren't the cars. The other reason is as part of that stormwater permit, which I don't want to rehash the entire uh, uh, last committee, <laughs> um, street sweeping is very important. And early in the season, it is the heaviest uh, with the debris. I can't sweep the streets unless it's over 32 degrees because there has to be dust suppression with the water um for those those uh, street sweepers to work so we go into your part of town we go up over by the uh, all the person Salzer's area where there's not a lot of street parking as soon as i can in april and i sweep those areas um because when north side parking goes there's sections of the curb i will never be able to get again so i like to try to at least sweep those dense areas without a lot of off-street parking um, before the alternate street parking ends. Otherwise, the, those gutters are just going to be filled filled with dirt and debris because there's constantly cars parked on both sides of the street. So when it ended in March, sometimes I could do it, but oftentimes the weather was, but the temperatures was too cold for us to street sweep. So that's part of the reason why I asked that it be extended to the end of April. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, actually, sure. Mr. Smith asked me that he said that he couldn't attend tonight. Okay. So he asked me if, uh, to deliver a message. Okay. And his uh, comment, he, he would have loved to be here to attend, okay. but he, uh, he uh, you know, for COVID reasons, so okay. he doesn't want to expose himself. So this arrived today. He sent it to me today. He says two nights ago it snowed. It looked like an inch or two. One night ago, that is last night, we parked on the odd side of the street so that the even side could be plowed. Last night, the even side was not plowed. Why did we have to park on the odd side last night? I want the winter parking rules changed. I propose that winter parking rules exist only when there is no to plow. After all, that is the reason for winter parking rules in the first place. He has a proposal and he says cars must all park on one side of the street when we have a snowfall greater than two inches. I wanted to read his message and I appreciate that, uh, that the <coughs> director people read the first one because Mr. Smith has been in contact with me on this issue for the last year on a regular basis. So I wanted him heard. Okay. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, as I said, he, he would be happy to to speak to you directly, but he, he is not able to understand. I know that there are other constituents from other uh, other persons that are uh, other people that are also um, voicing their frustration. And I have one last question, sure. related question. Do we know how many so the, how many of the Sheboygan's households do not have indoor parking? Um, might have percentage wise. Do not know if I have that, but I believe Uh, 
Um, I believe we, and I believe we took um, maps of concrete area um, for off street for off street parking when we did did that. But that could be in the GIF. I think it's in GIS. Right. Um, let me check with our map guy because when we did okay. the presentation, I remember something where they took the satellite pictures and they could um, kind of highlight the areas that had off street parking and did not have off street parking or limited. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we had it narrowed down. It was more of a visual mm -hmm. from what I recall. Mm -hmm. But I'll have to check on that tomorrow. I didn't know from that, but I, they wouldn't have saved them. In that, in that. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it would be an interesting data to uh, to look at because you know things may be different city by city depending on that situation, even neighbor by neighborhood. Right. So, and I, I think it it would be nice to be able to do something where we get two inches of snow, everyone moves, but the, the practice of it, people actually doing it. And then I've, this year alone, I've had four inches on the south side and half an inch up on the north, you know, the north side and, and vice versa. So. That, and I guess the one comment that I would make is, is that we've had, a, it's been tougher and tougher to get communication out. To the residents, I think that's that, that that's an, you know we just don't have the same communication that we had in the past. I don't think, and I I would be you know I kind of worry about you know getting that information out to the public and having the public respond to it sometimes. Well, yeah, and, and that's that that's the that, that's the issue. I think you know one, one part of that's one of the issues. So, although I think that nowadays with the apps capability, uh, that would be easier than in the past. I mean, everybody, I don't know, but think, but I, 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 you know, I, I think that we, uh, but I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I, but then you have people that don't, you still have a lot of elderly that don't do the, do, do, do the, you know, the, the technology. They don't, you know, there's a lot of that, that, that don't. Mm -hmm. um, and we, it, so we, we, we can, we can reach out to the, the Sheboygan Press. We can even do, uh, you know, a radio interview with the WHBL. And, and basically, how we talked this evening and gave the background, we, we would be more than willing to have that kind of dialogue with the media as well. Um, we, we, we have done that. I mean, it, it's true. We or just made the comment this week, or not this week, a little while back that it's amazing for years i would come to a public works meeting and i'd have a press reporter at every meeting every meeting and every meeting the next day or the, the uh, two days after there'd be a little article about our meeting about what we talked about what were the topics and what was discussed yeah it's just it's a different uh it's different <laughs> it's, yeah. it's and it, so what we're finding from a staff even talking and getting our message out it's it's a lot more burden on us to make sure I and mean, we have the social media sure. we have a facebook yeah. we have our website but you're right not everybody is in tune to that and we can send press releases to the Sheboygan press or to the radio yeah. it's but we're at their mercy a lot if they want to hook on to it or expand sure. upon it so but something like this i'm sure we would get plenty of uh Interaction if we would go yeah. to and talk with yeah. HBL, especially on their morning show. Sure, sure. And I've been to the King Park neighborhood meeting. Oh, yes, yeah. that's another one. I mean, yeah. they're one of the better neighbor associations. So Rick's had me usually there a couple times a year. Yeah, I, I don't know if your constituent, if he, if he has availability to, to watch this, but I, this is going to be online. You know, so he, he can maybe watch this and maybe he can listen to the explanations, whether he agrees with it or not, you know, but at least he can he can at least listen to the explanation that has happened, you know, here tonight. I've had email, I believe email or phone conversations with Mr. Smith uh, a year or two ago also. Yeah, I would, I would put what Mrs. Smith to it. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, I, so, I know you can't I know you can't see me <laughs> sure. um, but I did post in the chat sort of the link to 
the DPW website and sort of it shows the winter parking rules and what's on there. I think, you know, like Director Beeble was sharing of, of about getting a little bit more elaborate. Um, if there could be some sort of language that's created that can be reused each year that sort of breaks this down um, in a more bite size um, way that you can not only post onto your website, but then you could also have someone use on your social media. So I see that you have a Facebook page, you have Twitter. Um, I think it'd be worth the time to to put some of that language. I, I get the breakdown of it, but also um, understanding the decision making behind it, right? Like even some, some highlight points. Oh, I didn't see this. Yeah, that, um, on our website, the brochure, this is what I take to the neighborhood meetings and we hand out. Where, where is that brochure when you um, look at this? Go back to the, here, let me do this real quick. So that link you sent us? Yep, for the, where it says for more information, see the details on winter yep. parking and so emergency, please visit the street and sanitation page. Yep, and then, then when you click that, this is on our webpage, the map of snow emergency routes, uh, you can get the Nixle, because we do work with the police department. Uh, and then more in depth, snow emergency parking rules, vehicle torrents, you can go right to the ordinance. So I can look to add more to this page. And then the brochure is right there too. Yeah, because I, I found it through your news and updates. And if you right. scroll down on your news and updates, it just says winter parking rules start December 1st. And then I just clicked on read more. Yep. Um, but to be honest, I wouldn't know to, to, I guess I would look for parking. I wouldn't look for streets and sanitation, but maybe that's just me, a navigation of a website. All right. So then, oh, let me see something. It was, and we moved it to, uh, from December 1st to Christmas trees. It was the number one thing on the webpage. So we're, yeah. we started. Christmas tree. We could probably add that the back end to it. So, yeah. And okay. I mean, I think what I think what you have is a great start, and and you know, I I think just um, using the platforms that you have, which I think are done really well. So bravo. Um, just using those platforms to to re get it out there, and I you know, like I said, you could talk to the press and to the radio, but um, most folks are using. Um, will be Google searching and that's sort of when you do that, that's the page that comes up the quickest is the news and updates. So just something to point out. Yeah, thanks, well, appreciate it. Okay, any other discussion on this? I think that we'll move on to uh, 3.2. Yeah. General Ordinance number 372122, January 17th, 2022, document 20. An ordinance changing the speed limit on South 12th Street, south of Carmen Avenue from 35 to 25. I'll take this one. Okay. Um, the Department of Public Works over the last several weeks, slash months, and, and also Sheboygan PD has uh, received complaints about vehicles as they travel northbound on South 12th Street as they enter, as they enter the city of Sheboygan. Like in the Wheaton Creek Road area, past cons and all that kind of stuff, yeah. and get into the city. And really, it's just 35 miles an hour where it's posted through this area until you get up to Carmen Avenue, up to Carmen Avenue area right here. That's where it switches to 25. And we just have a lot of speeding complaints as people are entering into the city. And really, kind of Camelot, Camelot, uh, Camelot Boulevard down here is really kind of the entrance in, in, into the city. That's where the really heavy residential is for the city. So with the complaints you've had for speeding, like I said, it's, it kicks into 25 up here, up here by Carmen Avenue. So what we've decided is to just extend quarter of a mile from Carmen all the way down to the bridge, just to eliminate the deducted from 35 miles an hour to 25 miles an hour. So hopefully, hopefully that will help as people enter into the city in really heavy residential areas. It'll hopefully cut down some of the speeding. It's that it's just it's just from complaints I've had, and also that I know PD is quite a bit too. This is you enter in from from the the south going north on South Paul Street. Mm -hmm. Just a quarter of a mile we'd like to reduce from 35 to 25. 
So what's ironic is working with Thomas, we dug up the old ordinance from 1977. Back then they went from 25 to 35. So now we're 45 years later, <laughs> going back the other way again. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense because right by the bridge area here, you really okay. can't get into the city right, right through here. Yeah. So you're you're pretty much into all residents. And we do like, have a solar powered uh, 25 mile per hour sign here to kind of blink through things. Okay, like that's that. what I was just going to suggest. I think that would be the thing to. We have that there also, but we'll we'll sign this really heavy down here. Yeah, yeah. So 25 miles an hour. Hope that just something as simple as switching on a couple signs will feel. Okay. We'll yeah, there's, 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 there's right. some definite level awareness as people mm -hmm. do, so that they would. And I, and I would think that even the, the PD, if, mm -hmm. if, at this point, if they if the people are going 35 through there, they're probably going to give out warnings, probably right where, where, where the change over is. Yeah, when we switch these signs up, we'll flag them and we'll figure something out. Maybe we'll even put our message board out there for a week or two to say it. So the people kind of are aware. Yeah. Someone's changed from 35 to 25, or we'll figure something out just to make them aware of it. It's not a drastic change. Hopefully, a quarter of a mile helps a little bit. Okay. Um, okay. Any discussion on this? No, I was just going to say that makes sense because if, if they're going, if it says 35 and it changes to 25 after a while, yeah. they're probably going 40 or 45. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, to this, to the uh, south of where you know where we're this this is all all pretty much in the town of Wilson area. Okay. It really changes down here by the bridge. Uh -huh. By Camelot Boulevard. Okay. So. Do I have a motion? Yes, a motion to approve. I move the approval. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Uh, next meeting date is February 15th. Uh, seeing as we've exhausted the agenda, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Made seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Everyone's aye, because we are adjourned.